In this video, we're going to do some sales order processing. We're going to see what to do when items are out of stock. So you've received a sales order, but items are out of stock. What do you do? You've got four options. The first one is to put the entire order on hold, and that means you're not going to ship anything at all until it's all available. The second option is to ship only the items you have available, but keep the order as one, and we call this partial fulfillment or partial shipment. The third option is to ship part of the order now, but split the unshipped items to a separate back order. So you'd then have two sales orders where the customer originally just placed one. And then the fourth option is to drop ship the items, which means sending them directly from your supplier to the customer. OK, so option number one, putting the entire order on hold. What we're going to do here is allocate any available inventory, which means it won't be available to sell to other customers. And then we're going to update the order status to on hold, letting the customer know at the same time. So we've got a sales order here for Jimmy Cornell. And we can see that he's ordered 15 of the kayak spray deck, but we've only got 10 on hand on this particular warehouse. So what we need to do is allocate these 10 so that they don't sell to other customers. I just click allocate all, and then save the order. We can see here from this blue tick icon that the order has now been partially allocated because we've not allocated all of the 15 items available. You can find all partially allocated sales orders by going sales, by allocation status, part allocated. What we need to do now is put it on hold and let the customer know. So what I'd do is I'd change the status here to on hold and then in the notes and payment history quickly tap out a note to say that the items are not in stock and you'll be shipping the order later. If you find yourself doing this often, you can actually use a quick note to save yourself time. To make sure that the customer gets an email with a notification, just make sure you tick the box here and then save changes. The order has now been placed on hold and the customer has been notified and you can see this in the notes and payment history. On a regular basis, Go to your on hold sales and try and allocate remaining inventory. So select them all and click allocate. And if inventory has been allocated successfully, this icon will go green, which means you can then bring it back into the process and fulfill it as usual. Next, we'll look at partial fulfillment. And this allows us to ship any available items we have now and keep the order intact, so keep one sales order. This is very useful if inventory is on hand in another warehouse because you can do multiple partial fulfillments from each warehouse. By default, partial fulfillment is actually turned off on your account. So turn this on at Setup, Products and Inventory, Inventory Settings. So here's that same sales order from Jimmy. This time we're going to ship the 10 items we have on hand, leaving 5 to ship later. And when you've turned on partial fulfillment, you'll see a third option here under the Fulfill link called Partial or Advanced Fulfill. If you click that, it'll take you to the Goods Out screen, where for each row you can see in each warehouse how many items you have on hand. And if you had multiple warehouses here, you'd see how many items were in each warehouse. But we only have 10 in this warehouse, so let's ship 10 now. We'll choose a shipping method, let's go with Next Day Shipping, and then click to create a Goods Out note. It's also good practice here to update your sale to in progress. We now have a goods out note, which is also called a shipment. And if I click to open this goods out note, you can see that it gives us detail of what's been shipped in this shipment, i.e. 10 items, and then five items to follow. Let's close that, which takes us back to the goods out screen. And then from here, I can go back to the sale to see that it's been marked as partially shipped because we've got a blue brick icon. Because the 10 items also exist on the goods out note, they're allocated to this particular sale, which means they won't sell to anybody else. When I ship that goods out note, they'll be removed from inventory. I can either leave this sale in progress, or I could update it to on hold. Whatever I do, I can always find these sales by going to my allocation status and seeing those that are part allocated. Similarly, I can go and find all of my sales that have been partially fulfilled. And I'd come back to this list regularly to see if I could allocate any of the remaining inventory. 
So when goods come in on purchase orders, you come back here, allocate what you can, and then those sales that become fully allocated, you can then progress back into the fulfillment process by creating goods out notes. And this method of partial fulfillment is the one we recommend for most people most of the time. And the third option is splitting to a back order. And what that means is shipping all the available items now and moving the remainder to a back order. This is very useful if you want to invoice for the items that you've just shipped, because with Brightpearl, one order matches one invoice, so you can't do partial invoices if you do partial shipment. It's important to mention that this method cannot be used for integrated online sales channels, such as your e-commerce store, eBay or Amazon, because in those scenarios, one Brightpearl sales order needs to match one sales channel sales order, so that we can update the sales channel when the order is shipped. So what we have here is a sale from Jimmy, where he's ordered 15 items and we've fulfilled 10 already. We actually want to invoice for the 10 we've fulfilled, so let's split the remaining 5 to a back order. This is a telephone sales order, so that's fine, I can split this. Select all the items that you want to split to back order, and then click split to back order. This will calculate what you have left, so here on order 15 and fulfill 10, which means we're going to split 5. If he'd paid for this order, then what you can do is you can actually replace those 5 with a placeholder which maintains the price, so that the paid amount matches 15 items. That would make the back order free. In most scenarios though, you'd want to move the value of these items across to the back order, so don't tick this box. Just click split to back order. We've now got the original order, 32, and the back order, 33. So let's click into 33, where we can see it's automatically been created on a status called back order, and you can set that up at your sales settings, sales workflow. It's been given a parent, in other words, this was the original order ID, number 32. And in the notes and payment history, we can see items have been added from order 32. On the products and prices tab, we can see that the five items here have been brought across from the original sales order. Going back to the original sales order, where it was previously partially allocated and partially fulfilled, because the icons were blue, we've now gone fully allocated and all fulfilled, and the quantity has been reduced to 10. This means that when we ship those 10 items, everything will have been shipped and we can therefore invoice it. The fourth and final option is to drop ship the products direct from your supplier to the customer. And this needs you to link your products to suppliers and use the partial fulfillment or goods out screen that we used for partial shipment. So activate partial fulfillment at setup, products and inventory, inventory settings. Drop ship slightly more complex to set up, so there's a separate video that's dedicated to just drop shipping. Here we've got a sale that we've partially fulfilled. So the customer has ordered 15 items and we've fulfilled 10. We can see that because the icons here are blue and the truck is only half coloured, which means we've only shipped half of the items. What we need to do now is go to the partial or advanced fulfillment screen, where if we had any items in stock, they'd show in our warehouses here, but we can see that we've not got any items in stock. However, because I've linked the spray deck to my dropship supplier, it's showing here as an option. So let's select dropship this item, request that the supplier sends it as next day shipping, and then I'd probably choose to update the sale to status in progress, and then click to create a dropship purchase order. We can now see the dropship purchase order here, purchase order 34. Going back to the sales order, I can see that it's all been fulfilled because the brick icon has gone green. And this line has been shipped partly by a goods out note and partly by a dropship purchase order. Note, however, that the items have not yet shipped, and that's because the purchase order hasn't yet been invoiced. So let's go into that purchase order, email it off to our supplier, which marks the dropship purchase order as placed with supplier. We can see it's a dropship order by this little piece of text here. This order is set as dropship. When we later receive the invoice for this dropship purchase order, 
that marks the original sales order as all shipped. And we can go back to that sales order by clicking parent, where we can see that the truck has all gone fully coloured. So that was a super quick overview on Dropship. Don't forget to watch the full video if that looks like it's something you might use. And that takes us to the end of the sales order processing video where we see what to do when items are out of stock.